Good morning, True Crime friends. How you doing? Okay. Um, as is my custom, I'm a little bit too excited about true crime this morning, but that is only because Dio Redden is back in the news. I know you're like, wait, 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 why do I know that name? You know Dio Redden. He's the dude over there in Vegas. When the judge went to sentence him to jail, he was sailing across the courtroom and across the judge's bench, and he landed on her and they had to wrestle him off of her. It was quite a dramatic scene. Well, Mr. Dio is back in court and honey... I need to give you all of the latest news about his case. But first, you know what you need to do. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps other people find us. Okay, so look, for a bit of history, in case you did not see the video, back in January of 2024, that's what, like seven months ago now, eight months ago now, Diobra was down there at the courthouse and he was like, okay, I've been free on my own recognizance and um, I'm trying to do better with my life and I got a job, but... There's a little incident that I just got to go talk to this judge about real quick. And I'm sure she's going to give me probation and everything is going to be fine. And so apparently Mr. Redden had a long history of um, domestic violence and mental health issues and all kinds of stuff. And a few months prior to this court date, he had threatened his brother-in-law with an aluminum baseball bat. Yikes, anger issues much. And so he went to jail and they were like, oh, sir, all your herbs and spices in your brain is all messed up. And so they gave him some medication and it calmed him down. They had to send him over there to the nervous hospital. The people at the nervous hospital were like, okay, take these pills and you're going to be good. So he took the pills and he was good and he was calm and everything is fine. And then they released him to go out here in the streets with me and you, which probably P.S. not a good idea in his particular case. So um while he was out free just like roaming the neighborhood over there in las vegas he didn't take his medication he couldn't get to the cvs i don't know what the story was but he did not fill his prescription and so his brain went all ticklish again but he was like okay i was able to hold it together good enough to get a job and to get all my life in order so i'm just gonna go and talk to this judge i'm starting my new job next week i'm gonna talk to the judge and i'm gonna explain to her that yes my brain is slightly ticklish but i have a new job that i'm starting so if you please just give me probation then i can go work my job and i promise to be a good solid citizen and so he goes down there to the courthouse and nobody's expecting anything he's free he's roaming around and so the judge that morning had gotten up mary Kay holfus she had read the file and she's like oh uh domestic violence and domestic violence and domestic violence and battery and all of these different things he had been in and out of jail a whole whole bunch of times and so she's like okay sir um i heard your nice speech and you're asking for probation but based on this history sir i don't i think we need to do something different with you this time now look what happened next happened real real fast but when they played it back in court yesterday they slowed it down and played it in slow motion so you could see every single thing so let me explain to you what happened once it became clear that the judge was going to sentence him to jail the bailiff who was standing at the back of the courtroom was like, oh, this mama look about to get locked up. Let me take several giant steps forward without saying mother may I. So um, I can prepare to slap the cuffs on him and haul him off to jail like we do with so many people all day, every day, right? So the bailiff steps forward and the jingling of his handcuffs triggered something in Mr. Redden's brain. And he was just like, oh, no. And you can see in the video where he turns around and he sees the bailiff over his shoulder. And then he, in one leap, clears the table that he was standing in front of, the defense table. We didn't see this on the video when the video went viral. But apparently, he leapt over a two-feet defense table, takes a couple of steps, boom, 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 and then leaps four feet into the air, diving over the judge's bench, and lands on top of the judge and pulls her hair as hard as possible and starts banging her head and beating her and everything goes crazy, right? So the court clerk who was sitting over in his little court clerk booth was like, ruh roar, roar, roar. And so he jumps up, clearly, bless his heart, this boy has never been a fight in his life. He's like a law student or something. He was like, ah, judge! And so he grabbed Mr. Redden and dragged him off of the judge, but Deobra is fighting to get back over to the judge. And so the court clerk was like, ew, ew, ew. Actually, he was, he balled up his fist real tight and was hitting the man with the side of his fist. He was like, take that, take that here. Please stop. I'm not used to using my fist. And so um, he looked very serious. But um, if you slow that video down, it doesn't look that good for him. Anyway. 
so one of the other bailiffs or court people or whatever corrections officers jumped in and was trying to like contain Mr. Redden. Two or three people were trying to hold this dude back, but he's still fighting to get back towards the judge because he's going to get her in his mind. Also, his brain was super ticklish. I think it was like a full allergy attack or something on his brain. His brain had gone into overdrive. The judge is underneath her bitch, crouching, fetal position in a corner with scrapes and bruises and all kinds of stuff. The bailiff with the handcuffs, who had been at the back of the room, then runs to try and catch Mr. Redden, only he tripped and fell. When he tripped, he fell and gashed his head, requiring 25 stitches in his head, and he dislocated his shoulder. So he really couldn't help that much, but when a bunch of other people finally got Mr. Mr. Redden sort of contained, he was like, here, take my handcuffs and handcuff his other hand. Good luck. And so they take Mr. Redden out of the court. It's a whole melee, and it's all caught for the court TV, right? And I was at home like, I need to see every single thing. And so they take Mr. Redden down to like the jail or whatever. And they were like, hi, um, how you doing? And he said, and I quote, I'm a little bit tired because I tried to unfortunately unalive a judge today. And they were like, okay, can you just put on this little outfit? We're going to take you back over to the nervous hospital and see if we can't, you know, calm down the, the little ticklishness in your brain or whatever. And he was just like, okay, okay, I'm going to do that. And so then they go on now. I may or may not have started a rumor that Mr. Redden grabbed the gavel and was trying to gavel the judge within an inch of her life. I just made that up because I felt that in my spirit because what they said on the news was that um, she was struck with a hard object. So to me, struck with a hard object equals gavel. What actually happened was the judge fell backwards and she bonked her head on the wall or a chair or something else and she was injured. But since she's over the age of 61, she's considered like a protected person or something. Something. So Mr. Redden was charged with like battery on a protected person. Also, when they had him over in the back room, he spit on somebody. That's disgusting. Now, listen, you are not supposed to attack people at all. But the, the bodily, I can't. It's just the nastiest thing in the world to me. So a couple days later, when they bring him back to finish the sentence, the judge was gangster as anything. She's like, you think you kept me down? You did not. You about to get the maximum sentence I could give to you. Only they had him in handcuffs. His hands were covered. They had a spit hood over his head. They had him all shackled up six ways from Sunday. And he had to stand in front of that same judge and hear his sentence. So when the mental health people went to talk to him, they'd be like, hey, sir, um, we see you're not feeling well in that you tried to batter a judge. And he was like, mm-hmm. And they said, are you thinking of harming yourself? And he was like, no. And they said, are you thinking of harming others? He's like, I mean... Not the general public, but I do plan to unfortunately unalive that judge. Not anybody else. The rest of y'all are safe. Only the judge who was going to sentence me. I have plans to unfortunately unalive her. And they were like, okay, thanks so much for sharing. We have a nice soft bed for you over here at the nervous hospital where they're going to give you a whole bunch of pills and stuff and help your brain unticklish. By the way, have you been taking your medications since last time you was at the nervous hospital? And he was like, mm, no, because CVS was closed. Unclear. Anyway. So he goes off to the nervous hospital. The judge goes off to like patch her wounds. The, the dude who fell and slashed his head, got his stitches. He's on light duty down at the sheriff's department. Meanwhile, Mr. Redden's family goes on the news. Family, family, I know you thought you were helping. I really, really from the bottom of my heart know you thought you were helping. But I want to say for me to you right now, you did not help. His sister was like, okay, now see, I think the judge used the wrong words. Ma'am, that's not how society works. You can't be like, oh, this person said the wrong thing to me, so I'm going to gavel them within an inch of their life. You can't, that, no, no, that, mm-mm, mm-mm. The sister was like, see, um, if the judge had used the proper tone of voice to talk to my crazy brother, then he wouldn't have done that thing. Society has failed him. Hmm? Where do we get involved in this? The judge was trying to keep society safe. The sister went on to explain that uh, Deobra was born with a disadvantage. And I was like, okay, say more. She was like, he was born addicted to crack cocaine. Oh, 
Well, that is not society failing him, honey. That's his mom and daddy failing him. But okay, go ahead and say more. She was like, he was born with severe mental health issues and um, he was born with narcotics in his system. He'd been a mess since he was a baby. And so we've tried for a real long time to get him help. And sometimes he was okay and sometimes he's not. Mostly he was just going out here in the streets, running amok and harming himself and others. Ma'am, are you, is this your way of helping your brother? You're not helping. Um, and so she was like, so, I mean, some people have good days and some people have bad days. I don't know if you know, I've had some very, very bad days in my life. Many people have had very bad days in their life. None of those days, including trying to unfortunately unalive, un unfortunately unalive a judge, but okay, I'm willing to hear you girl keep talking. Although this is a terrible idea. Child, I'm the town gossip, so I want you to tell me every single thing. And she was like... Some people feel like, you know, you, you have a good day and you have a bad day. If he strings together two, three weeks of good days, that's a lot for him. And so I think the whole society should give him a break. And I was like, girl, if he can only string together two good weeks and that's a lot for him, I think the whole, whole society should put him in a nice soft place with padded walls and floors and maybe meals slid through a hole in the door. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the judicial system can do for him, but what I hope the judicial system does for him is not let him out free with me and you, cause no thank you. Um, so ma'am, sister, sh 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 she needs some of them shut up classes, some shut up pills and some shut up homework cause she should have shut up. So apparently Mr. Redden pleaded guilty to all the, yes, I leapt across things. And yes, I like, you know, I might've harmed others. Yes. I might've spewed on a, on a deputy or something, but that, um, trying to unfortunately unalive the judge. Yes. I said in like recorded statements and everything that I explicitly was trying to unfortunately unalive that judge, but, um, I'm pleading not guilty by reason of mental disease and defect. Okay. So you want to NGRI, not guilty by reason of insanity. Got you. Okay. Um, yes, but I think maybe you should go by guilty by reason of insanity. Like, yeah, you did that. Also, you were insane. Can I please just go have myself a nice bed down at the Nimus Hospital? So yesterday, um, they had Mr. Deober Wet Redden fully medicated in a suit. His hair was looking a little messy, but okay, okay, fine. In a suit and a tie, sitting there, shaved up. He looked halfway decent. And I was like, if you didn't know better, you would just think he was an average citizen with a bad haircut. Okay, cool. So he's sitting there and the prosecutor gets up and she tells the whole story that I just told you, right? The judge and everybody was scared and, you know, he tried to gavel her only. He might not have used a gavel, unclear. Anyway, um, the judge was fearful for her life and he said over and over, I was trying to unfortunately unalive the judge. So I was like, Mr. Defense Attorney, what you gonna say? Cause he, he doesn't said the quiet part out loud. Wait, while the prosecutor was giving her opening statement, as is common these days, they had the Zoom up and running because some of the experts and some of the other people were gonna appear on Zoom. Why did somebody Zoom bomb the courtroom? And the court clerk or whatever was like, oh, there's inappropriate things happening on the Zoom. And I was like, exactly which inappropriate things? Please tell us everything about it. Now, we all we heard was like some static and it sounded like people talking or something like that. Those of us watching on the court TV like I was, we didn't see anything. But the, it was three little court clerks sitting side by side. They could not stop giggling for the rest of the opening statements. Instead of watching the prosecutor, I was watching them lean over and giggle and talk to each other. They were like, it was inappropriate. It was inappropriate. And I was like, okay, either tell us exactly what was inappropriate or stop talking about it also um court clerks if y'all just want to get down in my comments or hit me up on my email or something i want to know every single thing about the inappropriate content and um i promise to share the information with no attribution just so you know that's gossip rumor mail at gmail.com anyway so um the opening statements got zoom bombed but they kept on rolling they kept on rolling and then 
the defense attorney got up and was like, hi, thank you so much for coming here. Let me tell you a little bit about my client. He got a real ticklish brain and he couldn't get down to the CVS. And so um, his little mental was all messed up. But now if you see him today, he's on medication. And I promise you, he's not going to leap over here and try and unfortunately in a life, any of you. And I was like, sir, Mr. Defense Attorney, you're not inspiring confidence because I'm nervous. Then the defense attorney opened his mouth and said the following statement. And if he tries to get up out of his chair and leave today, I promise you, I will tackle him. Sir, that is not the flex you think it is. Because if I'm over here on jury duty, I'm getting my ham sandwich at like $25 a day. And now my life is getting threatened. And this man who's like, what, weighs maybe a buck 25 is going to tackle a crazy person to protect me. You know what? I can just go back to work. I don't, mm-mm, sir. He was like, Mr. Redden didn't have his medication. And now Mr. Redden is fully medicated. And so you should just maybe... He's in GRI, not guilty by reason of insanity, because, oops, because, you know, them CVS hours are real tricky, and he can't always get there, and no, he was not working, but also, he was out of his mind, and he had nothing but free time, and his stepmom and them, his foster mom and his sister, they were trying to get him to go to the CVS and get him a doctor's appointment, but it didn't work out good, and so that's why he tried to, unfortunately, unalive the judge, but also... 3.7 seconds. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? He was like, I counted. And in watching the video in regular motion and a slow motion, from the time he heard the little chink chink of the, um, the bailiff's handcuffs until he leaped over the desk was 3.7 seconds. That's not enough time to have premeditation for unaliving somebody. And I was like, right. Only if there are any uh, true crime fans on that jury, we know the mosquito theory. I do not remember which trial this came from, but the mosquito theory is this. You see a mosquito flying around and you look and then you smack, right? Now that whole transaction might take 3.7 seconds or less, but noticing the mosquito and deciding to smack it, that is the amount of time it takes to form premeditation. Because you don't see a mosquito and think, oh, that's lovely, I'm gonna keep it as a, as a pet. You think to yourself, oh, he got to die. Just like the other day right here on my video, I unfortunately unalived a moth while I was recording a video. Was that a premeditated unaliving? Yeah. Because I had time to think about it. Not a lot of time, but it was reflex like, boom, he's dead. And so um, that's what happened with Mr. Dioba Redden and that judge. Only there were people protecting her. And the defense attorney opened his mouth and said, he was not going to unalive her. They pulled him off of her. So he didn't unalive her. Um, According to his statement, had he been given the chance, he would have indeed unalived her. And it took three grown men, four minutes to pull him off and wrestle him to the ground. It's not like they tapped his shoulder and said, excuse me, sir, please stop trying to unalive the judge. And he went, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, let me just put my pinkies back out and get myself together. Here are my wrists so you can put me in handcuffs and take me over to the nervous hospital. And can we stop by CVS on the way? That is not what happened. They had to wrestle that man and wrestle that man. And then he was spitting on people in the back room. So Mr. Defense Attorney, I'm gonna need you to miss me with all of this foolishness. So look, I personally... I'm willing to give Mr. Diobra the presumption of innocence, sort of. Now listen, the jury is required to presume him innocent. I, as a member of the gossiping public, am not. In my opinion, he is guilty, also insane. Like you could do both. It's not just in GRI, not guilty by reason of insanity. He could be guilty and also insane. Also, they got a nice bed for him over at the nervous hospital. Now, let him be medicated. Let him have everything he needs over there, not out in the community. Because it's like law abiding.
law-abiding citizens. And he don't, you don't want him to be like, oh, that person's cleared their throat too loud and he just had to unfortunately unalive them oops. No, no, sir. No, no, no. Now listen, Mr. Giorbrew's trial rides on today and I will be riding here with it. I will be watching every single thing and I will report back on all the foolishness. Don't you worry about it. So, Stay tuned. Also, I have, I'm going to create a Deobra Redden playlist of all the Deobra Redden videos that I have made. I'm going to put a link to it in the description of this video. I will see you soon. Bye.